Hi, I'm Mark Fletcher. I'm Vice President of Public Safety Solutions at 911 Inform. Welcome to the next episode in my Did You Know series of videos. In this third video of the series, we'll cover what next generation 911 actually is. You ready? Let's go. Before we dive into Next Gen 911, let's look back quickly at the history and timeline of emergency calling just to level set our knowledge and understanding. The very first 911 call was placed on February 16, 1968 in Haleyville, Alabama. And the purpose of that was to provide a single three-digit easy-to-remember short code that would universally reach emergency services in the local calling area without having to know the telephone number. The 1980s brought digital switching and selective routing with enhanced 911 that was initially deployed in Central Florida. This provided ANI or automatic number identification and ALI automatic location information to the 911 call taker on a computer display. This was a major step in the call routing of 911 that forms the basis of the services even today. Now between the year 2000 and today, the Internet Engineering Task Force, known as the IETF, started work on next generation 911 standards that would ultimately define the ESINET, or Emergency Services IP Network, and the foundational standards behind the US iteration of NINA's NG911 I3 standard family. So what is NINA's I3 standard for next generation 911? NG911 I3, or Iteration 3, is a family of standards. Created by NINA, this was designed to ensure a standardized development and evolution of an NG911 infrastructure globally. The NINA I3 version 1 introduced the ESINET, or Emergency Services IP Network, delivering a network architecture that was available to public safety, and currently I3 is in its third evolution. I3 utilizes the standard session initiation protocol, or SIP signaling, that is sent with the call or session setup. By design, the terminating agency call takers are selected by the emergency call routing function, or ECRF, in the network. This functional element delivers calls to the appropriate PSAP ECC based on various data points, like location and endpoint availability, just to name a few. This functional element is critical because it eliminates the need for a selective router as well as the legacy Ali Annie data records to manage. For the first time, information can be sent live with the call. The Next Gen 911 i3 version 2 introduced the Voice Positioning Center, or VPC as a routing element in the network that allowed for origination networks to initiate NG911 traffic and for ECCs to receive that traffic despite the end state of the other networks. By developing this type of functional element and positioning it in the middle of the call path, it allowed originating networks and terminating networks to migrate to next generation 911 based on their own schedule while the VPC provided translation services in the middle. Now, while NG911 i3 v2 is still a deployable option even today, and in some cases your only choice, most networks are quickly migrating to NG911 i3 v3 capabilities. And with NG911 i3 being an iterative standard, full interoperability forwards and backwards is maintained. So based on this, current enterprise NG911 deployment projects are best to focus on providers with a clear understanding and focus on the future state. Product roadmaps, features, and relationships are excellent indicators of companies that will continue to grow as the NINA i3 iterations continue to occur. Being careful with your network at this point will prevent getting stuck in a dead-end technology in the future. This finally brings us up to today, where active NG911 deployments at the carrier level already exist across Canada, providing next-generation core services and active PSAP deployments with NG911 connectivity in several areas across the provinces. 
In the U.S., active deployments exist in several states with full NG911 core services already built out in California, utilizing three separate regional providers and a fourth providing a statewide umbrella network that ties the entire state together. Nina and its sister organization, Ina in Europe, have demonstrated interoperability and call transfer between NG911 systems in the U.S. and NG112 LTD solutions in Europe. Additionally, transfers between the U.S. and Canada have also been tested. But wait a second, my local police department has text to 911. Doesn't that mean next generation 911? Well, as of 2024, unfortunately, no. What? Well, certainly next generation 911 will support multimedia messaging, which will absolutely include text messaging. However, support for text to 911 was implemented prior to the NG911 standards being finalized or deployed. So deploying it as a next generation 911 services just wasn't possible. In the legacy networks, Text to 911 utilizes a new entity in the carrier network. That entity is called the Text Control Center, and its job is to take Text to 911 messages from the standard PSTN network, query the carrier network for the tower location, determine the appropriate 911 center, and then deliver that information using legacy technology that the 911 center has set up specifically for text messaging. Quite often, it doesn't provide location beyond the tower. Multimedia content embedded in that message typically will not go through, and it's a connection that'll be abandoned when next generation 911 is put into place. Now, despite the abandonment of equipment in the network and at the 911 centers, with a fully deployed next-gen 911 emergency services IP network, IP-based multimedia is preserved through the network and delivered directly to the PSAP in its native digital format. And that means any multimedia content will also be preserved. Now, in addition to data itself located in the payload, links or URIs to other data can be passed along. And those can be sources for video, floor plans, or other relevant multimedia content, not on the caller's device, but available to the 911 center. Even today, there are mechanisms that provide a way of getting this information to the 911 centers in an over-the-top model, which is just another reason why enterprises should be moving in this direction today. It's not wasted time or effort. As of April 2024, according to the Congressional Research Service report that was provided to Congress for consideration of the transition to NG911, networks are currently being deployed at the state level across the United States. And as you can see, next generation 911 is in progress in all but a few areas. Let's go back to legacy E911 for the enterprise. E911 call delivery is based on static tabular data that correlates to a specific telephone number with a specific entry in the master street address guide. In this unique individual record, an additional field of typically 20 to 30 characters exists. That field is commonly referred to as address line two and it allows administrators to populate that field with additional identifying information about the actual location of that device, typically the floor, room, or cubicle information, in some type of format that should be meaningful to first responders. Now, while this may be marginally sufficient for endpoints that are fixed and not nomadic, devices where a telephone number exists at more than one location simply can't utilize this mechanism, as each device requires a unique telephone number. To get around this problem, over-the-top NG911 can support this as a transitional model, and then be retrofitted to a full NG911 deployment at a later time. Once again, true next-gen 911 call delivery utilizes standard SIP signaling on the carrier trunks, to embed a presence information data format location object as a data payload in the SIP call setup header. 
The device itself can be anything, from analog to digital to IP or SIP. Now, in addition to SIP providing real-time routing guidance, virtually unlimited additional information can be made available to the PSAP ECC. Information can be delivered in-band in the SIP header or as a referenced URI that can be retrieved if desired and needed. This model doesn't overload the center with data they don't want, but lets them know what data is available if it'll assist in their handling of the incident, such as video in an active shooter environment or temperature sensor data in a building where there's a fire. In the future, the framework is even there for personal medical data to be easily transmitted if the user desires to do so. That's the value of Next Generation 911. At 911 Inform, our emergency event management solution was custom built from the ground up for tomorrow's Next Generation 911 core services. Our senior staff members hold multiple patents for the delivery and processing of multimedia data. And we were the first in the industry to pioneer new concepts in over-the-top delivery of next generation 911 additional data. Our solution removes the complexity of legacy E911 systems that have been holding back the industry and a full migration to NG911. This is why we coined the phrase safety simplified. If you'd like us to show you how you can establish federal compliance, keep your staff and guests safe, as well as minimize the costs and overhead that's associated with legacy systems, visit us on the web at 911inform.com or call 833-333-1911 and speak to one of our engineers. That wraps up my latest video on Did You Know? What actually is NG911? I'm Mark Fletcher, ENP, and I'm Vice President of Public Safety Solutions at 911 Inform. Remember to follow me on X at Fletch911 and be sure to check out my profiles on LinkedIn and Facebook. You'll also find links to all of my blogs at Fletch.tv. Make sure you like and subscribe, that way you'll be immediately notified for any future content that I publish. Thanks for listening, and as always, if you're in public safety, thanks for what you do. Stay safe and take care.